Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. We are here to discuss Mauricio Pochettino because we've seen a lot of discourse throughout the season as to whether we should keep Pochettino, whether he should be sacked. There's been numerous opportunities where you should have sacked him. But we're now in a period where we're playing good football. We're cooking. Um, the game management's looked a lot more improved. And the big old question is, does Maurizio Pochettino deserve more time? Does he deserve more faith from Chelsea fans? Does he need to be allowed to cook? Do the Poch outers need to apologise? Because I, I was seeing all the, all the talk over the last 24 hours. Where are the Poch outers now? Where are the Poch outers now? Hello. Hello. We didn't go anywhere. It's just we're not speaking with the same vim because guess what? Our team's winning. Guess what? Our team's playing good football. And guess what? This is what we've been asking for all season. So guess what? We're, we're, not, we're not as angry anymore. Because we're playing good football and this is exactly what we have wanted from this team. But why were we not doing that for 80% of the season? Because they don't want to answer that or they'll just give you the vague answer. B -b 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 injuries. I I injuries. Injuries are the reason why we couldn't beat Sheffield United away. Injuries are the reason why we couldn't beat Burnley at home down to 10 men. Injuries are the reason why we couldn't beat Brentford home or away. Why we couldn't beat Wolves home or away. Why we, we got battered against Manchester United. The worst Manchester United side in Premier League history. And they ripped us apart because b -b 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 injuries. Injuries are the reason for everything. Sure. Sure. Not listening to any of that. Now, it's not all just going to be negatives in this sort of video because I can admit there has been positives in this season. We have obviously climbed up the table compared to last season, even though if you're going to compare us to last season, you are comparing us to the worst form of Chelsea Football Club I've ever seen and a lot of Chelsea fans have ever seen. The bar is in hell. And we got rid of like two thirds of that squad. So you can't even talk to me about a vast improvement in the team. We've just improved the personnel. We have a better attack. We're now making better attacking numbers. Shock and horror. What happened to our defence? What's happened to our defence? But, but that's one positive. Our attacks got a little bit better. Our form has improved. We're obviously cooking in the last five or so games. Spare me the 2024 BS because I'm going to come into that later. The home form. The home form has visibly improved throughout the year. And that will give credit to the manager for that. The players. The players are clearly behind the manager. The players back the manager. And they want another season with him too. That can be put as a pro to keep Pochettino. In terms of appointments as well, I do see like Tuchel's now staying at Bayern. Thiago Motta might be going to Juventus. So in terms of options, it might be a little bit thin. And if that's the case, our hands might be a little bit tied. And if that's the case, and like the board say there isn't any options out there, as much as I would potentially find it hard to believe, because recruitment should have been looking months ago, and they should have already had a couple options on the table already. But if there is no options on the table, I guess you're kind of stuck there, and you might have to wait until next season anyway. But that's not really a case of support. That's just you saying there's not anyone else out there we can bring in. So I'm just stuck with the bozo we already have. And that's about it. Like, if we talk about the season as a whole, people really need to stop deluding themselves into thinking that, like, the only reason why we have only got into the top six now is because of injuries. That's BS. That is straight BS. It is a lazy narrative from fans who just don't want to analyse game in, game out. They can just say, injuries for everything. Injuries, no, we had injuries. Couldn't beat Sheffield United because of injuries. Um, Brentford nearly done the double of our, over us because of injuries. Sorry, I'm not listening to it. Because if injuries are such a problem, can someone tell me why it took us to have our biggest injury crisis of the season to finally start playing good football? Can someone tell me that? Why is that? Because it's not like... We gradually got to that point 
No, we made a tactical change 2-0 down against Villa because there was no other options for us to use and it worked and we've been doing the same thing since then. Fixtures have also kind of been on our side. We played an out-of-form Tottenham, an out-of-form West Ham and a Brighton side that were very easy to get at. And I'm not even trying to say that to undermine the way that we've played too. But you look at the teams that we've been playing. In terms of the only things that really wowed me in terms of stepping up. Maybe Man City. The Man City games. We've done well in those ones. You can put that in as another pro to keep Pochettino if you want. But let's not act like we didn't just make a random change out of nowhere. And we're just running with it. And that's why I can't really be too gassed over this. How did it take you to match day 33 to just think, let's invert a fullback and, and let's just add more players into the midfield? Great. We should, we should have been doing that time ago. How it's taken us to match day 33 to realise, you know what? Maybe Gallagher shouldn't be in the 10. Maybe he shouldn't be in the 10. Maybe it stifles our build-up play, having a guy who refuses to pass forward play as our number 10. But then again, why has this team just been centred around Conor Gallagher for so long? Which is why I can't say Pochettino deserves a lot of faith or he deserves more time. I don't think he's done enough to justify more time. He might just get it because of circumstance, because there might not be other options out there. But that's not a reason to have faith. Faith is earned and the fact that it's taken us to match day 33 to get a tune out of these players is an indictment on the manager because he's spent all season saying that this team isn't good enough, saying that we need more experience, blaming the players and missed chances even though your structure has been absolutely abysmal for nine tenths of the season. But then you want to sit there and act like you're a genius now because you finally found a way to make them cook. That's not enough for me. Like, no set-piece coach brought with you because you thought individuals could do the job. And that's crazy enough. It's, look how that works with Tottenham. And said the same thing and they get cooked on set-pieces every week. Hell, we even managed to outdo them at set-pieces. They're that bad when it comes to it. And also, let's not even take into, a, into account the fact that we haven't taken advantage of a full preseason. We haven't taken advantage of the fact that there was no Europe. We had the, statistically the easiest start of the season compared to anybody else in the Premier League. And we got five points out of five games. The misprofiling of players has been ridiculous. Colwell left back, Chilwell left wing, Enzo playing left wing, Enzo playing second striker, Gallagher on the wing. Disassi right back when Gusto's fit. So in games like Brentford at home, Madueke is left isolated because there's nobody overlapping for him. Stifling our attacking play and forcing us to only play down one side. How does that make sense? The, the results the results speak for themselves. 4-1 Liverpool, 4-1 Newcastle, 5-0 Arsenal. Which, to, just back on the injury topic... That's the one game where I could potentially give it to Pochettino in terms of injuries. Because you lost Palmer and Gusto for that game. I was going to that game expecting a defeat. Then he goes and changes the back two that nearly kept a clean sheet against Man City for no reason. Just to start a straight out of injury de Sassi. And the baddiest shield in terrible form. Played Gilchrist at right back. And then it's like, okay, any goodwill I might have been able to give you for this game. You've just thrown it back in my face with that setup. Because what are you doing? Then 3-0 down and we wheel out Chalaba. 5-0 down and we wheel out Silver. Like, what? What? How does that make any sense? They should have been starting. But hey, there's one game where I can talk about injuries. One game. But that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't give away for all the other poor results this season. Because people say, oh, injuries and everything. Why am I eight points off, off fourth? Why am I eight points off fourth place? Can someone tell me that? If, the, if this team was, so, was not good enough. It's not because players have just came back at the right time. Because we started this run of good football with our biggest injury crisis. 
So again, miss me with that agenda. I'm not listening to it. That is BS. If injuries were such a problem, we would have got cooked by Tottenham. We would have got cooked by West Ham. So let's look at the games before that. Losing to Brentford, not good enough. The draw at Brentford, not good enough. Nottingham Forest at home. Villa at home. Man United away. Everton away. Wolves away. Wolves at home. Games like Liverpool, like really you're not going to win anyway. Games like Arsenal, you aren't going to win anyway. Understandable. That's why there's some games like I'm not really going to talk too tough on. Even Burnley, like to a point, as I've said as well, I said it on my fan cam, like players got to try and solve that themselves. You did have chances. You should have buried them. My biggest problem with the, with the Burnley game is we look like we were dying on set pieces. Again. But people will ignore all of that. They won't talk about the individual games because it's easy to talk about injuries. And because we're top of the 2024 table. 29 points out of 51 is not anything to flex. It's not. And that just is a bigger indictment on the Premier League, in my opinion. Because how is that the fourth best in the league? There's barely half of the points available to you. That is insane. That's also part of the reason why we've climbed up the table as well. But I only say part because I want to give the players their fair dues. Because they are the ones who also produce this good form. Partly the manager as well. And that's the reason why we are where we are. But in terms of the games that we have played. Four good games. Maybe five now if you want to include Brighton. Five good games that we've won. Spurs, West Ham, Newcastle, Everton. And I'll put this Brighton game in there as well. But that 2024 table completely ignores the draws. The Burnley, Sheffield United, Brentford's, all of that. The awful victories like Crystal Palace, which was a straight mid-off. And then we scored two late goals against a team who at the time had conceded the most goals after the 90th minute in the Premier League that season. Fulham, we won 1-0 with a penalty. Man United, awful, awful mid-off. How we managed to come back and win that game when we were losing in the 99th minute is absolutely ridiculous. And the Forest game where we were absolutely awful for about 70, 80 minutes. Then we brought on the right subs and we won the game. Credit to Poch for the game management. But in terms of this season, the big question is, does Pochettino deserve more time? Does he deserve more faith? No. No, he doesn't. He hasn't done nearly enough to justify that faith. He hasn't done enough to justify that time. He might get it because there might just not be anybody else in the market or because the board just want to blindly back him based off this run of form. But that's not going to be enough for me. So it's still potch out for me until he does something. Well, until he can drag this into next season. Because if we start well next season, we'll let him cook. We'll let him cook. Because then at least you dragged this season's form into next season. At least we've hit the ground running, which is what we should have done this season. So if we can get to that point, then maybe talk to me about it. As for right now, I'm still here. The potch outers are all still here. And it's not because of ego. It's not because of ego. Like half the idiots are saying in the comment section. It's because I don't have a goldfish memory. Just because I bun don't mean I forget everything that easily. Don't get it twisted. We have been awful for 80% of the season and people now just want to pretend like that was okay because we're now cooking in the present day. No, that's not enough to prove anything. You can prove that if you make it to next season. Because my belief is with the squad. My belief is with these players. Because these players have justified to me my belief that they should have been competing for top four. Because they are eight points off fourth already. We should be sitting here talking about how we've got back into the Champions League in year one under this manager. And then we wouldn't be complaining. But we failed in that target. And because we lowered our targets and we lowered our expectations to top six, now we're acting like it's okay. Yeah, we're back in we're back in Europe. Yeah, we should have been there months ago. We should have been there months ago. But hey, 
Better late than never. Go and beat Brentford. If you make it to next season, hit the ground running. No more excuses about inexperience. No more excuses about injuries. No more excuses about time. No more excuses. You get results or you leave. And we'll see what happens. Big up to everybody. Like, subscribe. We are still Potch out. And up the Chelsea.